Oh, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to Nintendo Prime. It feels good to be back here bringing you some fresh Nintendo news. And I know some of you are going, Nate, did we really just go three days without videos and two weeks doing this voiceover gameplay for you to unveil your brand new set and it's just a brick wall? Well, not exactly. Maybe we'll get more into that a bit later because uh, technically the set's not done. But we're here to talk about some news because yeah, some big news has happened the last couple of days. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk a little bit about the Kotaku situation later. That's right, there's a situation with Kotaku. Uh, but first, let's dive deep into what's going to happen here with the future of the Nintendo Switch, the, the, the system right here. Um, yeah, there's a new one coming. Uh, probably not for a year or two, but it's coming. It's probably next generation. And we have some real information this time and not just your run of the mill rumor. So that's really cool. Before we get into that, I gotta remind you, we are actually giving away a Nintendo Switch, OLED, a PlayStation 5, or an Xbox Series X. Head to that gleam.io link down in the pinned comment or in the description. All right, so look, this is the Switch OLED. This bad boy came out last year, and there were so many rumors surrounding this platform. Really starting with Takahashi Matsuzuki that got the ball rolling all the way back in 2019, talking about Nintendo's next system, having 4K, having other feature sets like DLSS, and obviously eventually leading to what we got here, seven inch OLED panel, the kickstand, but we never actually got that 4K DLSS. He claimed that there were like 10 or 11 different studios making games for this more powerful platform and that he expected it to get announced last year and come out and it never did. Instead, we got the Nintendo Switch OLED, which there's nothing wrong with the Switch OLED on the surface. It's basically a revision of the original Switch. Well, people had wondered, was he lying? Is there some truth to this? Nintendo has said they're working on new hardware, but they're not gonna talk about anything. Well, here's what happened. Nvidia over the weekend got hacked and got hacked bad. They've already publicly come out and commented on it, admitting it happened and admitting that they're being held for ransom. The people who did this are actually seeking a huge chunk of money from Nvidia or they swear they will release the Kraken and make it so all of their GPUs can now become mining cards. For those who don't understand that, we're not gonna dive too deep into it. Uh, they have locked down their 3000 series of cards to not really be efficient at mining, so gamers can get their hands on it during the shortages. And they're basically saying, hey, we hacked you, we have all the information, we can unlock it, pay us money, or we're going to do just that. So very interesting, but what came out of this for us and why we're talking about it here is because in these documents, the few that they have put out there publicly to show, hey, look, we actually did hack you and here's our proof. And again, Nvidia already admitted this happened, uh, is some information on the next generation Nintendo platform. And I'm calling it next gen, not Switch Pro, because it is way too powerful to be just a Switch Pro. Switch Pro is always supposed to be a minor upgrade. This is significant and we have exact details because on the code base of this is some files called NSN2. Now that's very interesting because the original Switch was called NSN on the back end. That's what their chipset was called. I don't, I'm not really sure if it means Nintendo Switch Network or, or whatever the heck their, their, the, the code name means, but that is what it has been called this entire time, dating back to when we first discovered it in 2017 after the Switch came out. So NSN2 obviously is a completely different set, something for Nintendo. And what's interesting is when you dig into the files here, holy crap. Um, one, based on Ampere. You know what else is based on Ampere? The 3000 series of GPUs. That's right, that's the current, you know, 3060, 3070, 3080, 3080 Ti, 3090. That's the series that this is being built off of. It will have DLSS 2.2, at least that's what the current version was in these files. And yeah, this whatever platform it is that Nintendo and Nvidia are working on will also obviously have uh, 4K capabilities. Now, I'm not gonna say 4K screen, but likely 4K upscaling for output on a TV. And yeah, this is just really interesting. Ray tracing, by the way, was brought up. That wasn't even part of rumors last year. Ray tracing is actually in these files as well. So if it's using Ampere technology, obviously ray tracing would be part of that. So this is uh, way, way more interesting than I ever expected this to be. And obviously significantly more powerful than I expected it to be. Now it's going to obviously be cut back power limited. It's not going to be as powerful as like a 30, you know, 60 in a, you know, a laptop like this or whatever. But what it will do is allow us to play PlayStation 5 games on the go or at home on a TV 
comfortably because they're using AMD technology and all they get to use is the AMD um, FSR super resolution, which is great by the way. There's nothing wrong with that. Nintendo's actually using that technology right now, but it's not as good as DLSS, which is actually a hardware based way to increase performance and resolution. Um, yeah, it, it, it's honestly, Nintendo's in the right for in terms of how to do it best by working with NVIDIA in this case. Now we obviously don't know the information on the CPU. There's no CPU information in here. NVIDIA doesn't make the CPU. They, they, they get it from ARM and kind of implement it in. Uh, and this is obviously a chip that doesn't exist anywhere. There's not like a laptop equivalent or a desktop equivalent that we can go like, okay, this is what that will be. Cause there's no clock speeds listed here. There's no um, T flops or anything else that we can sort of guesstimate at what this is going to be. We just know it's Ampere architecture, DLSS 2.2, which is the latest version. And it was worked on literally a week ago. In fact, we actually discovered through the files that these files began all the way back in 2019, suggesting that that is around the time Nintendo started to develop their next generation system. Again, not gonna call this a pro. When you're going from this, which is Maxwell, you know, a couple generations old to Ampere, that's a massive leap in technology, one that only happens with brand new systems. So this has got the world buzzing. Nintendo's not happy, reportedly anyways, that this stuff got out because Nintendo doesn't like exact information like this getting out. So what happens now? Well, pretty much nothing. NVIDIA is gonna deal with this hacking. They're gonna probably not pay the ransom and deal with the consequences from there, and try to figure out who did this and sue the hell out of them. But that's neither here nor there. What really matters is what's going to happen for the future of Switch. And that's the very, very interesting question that I don't have an answer for. And I don't know if you guys have an answer for it either. It's very hard to think when this system could come out. Is it 2023? Is Nintendo going all in right now? You get those DLC updates for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe through next year. Could they, be, could they be ending because they're launching a new system next year? Are they launching this new system in 2024? And the thing is, if they wait till 2024, there's already gonna be a new NVIDIA architecture. Like Ampere is exciting to hear about today, but will Ampere be exciting in two years? Because, you know, the chip this is using was 2015 and released in 2017. So you might go, man, it's crazy they're using Ampere, but if it's not going until 2024, that's right in line with this. This was current technology in 2015, and then it came out two years later. So if it's current technology today, and it comes out two years from now, it's the same pattern. It also makes it more affordable, and thus it actually makes sense. But what's cool about that is PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X are still gonna be relevant in two years and in the middle of their life cycles. You kind of see what Nintendo's doing. They're releasing these sort of, in the middle of the competition's life cycles, oh, now we got you and we can sell into your next cycle. Kind of interesting Nintendo strategy here and I really, really like it. Plus obviously, I presume they're not gonna go away from the handheld portable concept, hence why they're still going with NVIDIA in the first place. So I really like what Nintendo's doing. Uh, I think this makes sense. I think this is smart. And it's nice to at least have some concrete details here coming from a legit leak rather than just baseless speculation or having to trust reporters like Takahashi Machizuki, which I'm not saying I don't trust you, but I am saying it is a bit hard to just, yeah, this is right. And then obviously us YouTubers get yelled at when it ends up not being right. But then was it right this whole time? But you just miscalculated when it was coming out? Cause I'm sure there's dev kits out there, right? There has to be at this point if it's coming out in two years. Now this last story, I actually gotta glance at the notes a little bit here because uh, I, I got a question for you guys. Is this the end of Kotaku? Now we have Kotaku content on our channel. We actually covered, uh, ported over a video that they refused to put anywhere on their website back in the day for Wii U showing like had the first video footage of the Wii U system. Uh, so we, Long time ago, took that and put that on our YouTube channel because I didn't think it was fair that people were forced to go to Kotaku to watch it in their ad riddled mess of a website that it was almost impossible to get through. I actually couldn't watch the Wii U video on there. It was that broken, even with AdBlocker. So like I had to like dig into the code base and find the direct link. And when I realized how hard it was for me to watch, it was that hard for others as well. So I said, you know what, Kotaku come after me. I don't care. Took their video, put it up on YouTube. Didn't even make a penny off of it. There was no ads or anything. But uh, what's interesting is over the years, Kotaku has developed a reputation. And it's really go was going downhill before the former editor-in-chief, Stefan Dottillo left and Jason Schreier left. And it's only gone more downhill since. They really politicized a lot of their content, which people, some people enjoy that, I suppose. There obviously is a crowd for it, but a lot of gamers get annoyed when politics and, and personal agendas are just injected into gaming news. However, something's happening with Kotaku. And I just want to briefly talk about this because 
I personally think this might be the end. Um, so a massive work strike is going on right now called GMG Union, uh, where a majority of the staff at Kotaku and other associated websites, all under the same umbrella company, um, like Lifehacker and Gizmoda, are fighting for better wages and benefits as always. And of course, the reputation of many of these sites has actually nosedived over the years, uh, which makes you wonder, what, what remains of their established audiences might start finding news elsewhere and not return? And that's really where I kind of see this going is, look, I'm not saying don't fight for better. I'm not saying don't stand up for your rights and better wages and better work treatment and, and fine, right? You guys do what you gotta do. I don't know what your wages and current benefits are now. They're probably better than mine. So I'm not gonna sit here and talk about it too much in that regard. That's your personal finances, personal um, you know, treatment at your workplace. But I will say, you gotta be a bit careful because Already people weren't trusting those outlets and then there's already not a ton of these paid journalism gigs out there and guess what if people discover they can get their news other places and get it better and more informative and they might find out they enjoy that more whether it's from YouTubers or other you know news channels and video game channels and tech channels um, you might come to find out that when the strike is over if it ever gets over there's no audience to come back to. And that's why I think this potentially is the end of Kotaku. Now, I don't think Tyler's getting deleted or anytime soon. And there's obviously still some inherent value there. You can just go click on any recent article there and see, I'm not saying go visit them, but you can go there and click on some articles and see they have a bunch of comments. So they have an audience, but the thing is, how long will that audience stick around? They've stuck around through a lot of other BS, but if all their favorite writers are gone, what then? And I think that's what we're left with today. And I think that's why you gotta be careful sometimes knowing the position and power you have when you strike. Again, not, you know, I'm not saying they shouldn't, maybe they're treated like shit, maybe, maybe that's why they don't keep good staffers like Stephen Dettillo and Jason Schreier around because they don't pay competitively, because the benefits suck. But also gaming journalism jobs are kind of dwindling down as YouTube kind of becomes the place to go. And not everyone's made to be on camera. Not everyone can handle the pressure. Not everyone can handle the stress that comes along with this and the constant being in front of people directly. It, it, I can tell you as someone who used to be a writer, used to be a journalist, it was hard reading some of the comments. It gets even worse when the comments can sometimes not even be about the things you say. It can be about how you look. It could be about the way you carry yourself or the way you pronounce things, but you don't have to worry about when you're typing. Oh, I know how to spell words. I know how to use them properly. But then when you say them, you might enunciate them weird. You might have a strange accent. You might not be attractive. So people don't like to look at you. It's it's a really weird space. Uh, thankfully, my audience has been pretty understanding, but we've been at this a long time. If you look at some of my early videos, God dang, I had no camera presence. I didn't know what the hell I was doing. I would probably be like this, just staring at the brick wall. Oh, hey. Hey guys, how's it going? This is probably the best side of me that you would ever see. Like, oh man, Nintendo Prime, look at this. Top of the <laughs> <laughs> All right, folks. I am Nintendo Rebel Jets from Nintendo Prime. I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. Let me know what you think about this kind of basic set, but I really like this. There's a couple things still to happen, but uh, don't worry. We'll have a full studio tour here, I think, by the end of the week, if not next week. There's still some things we're waiting on to finalize it, but it's looking good. It's looking clean. We're going to be back to pretty much a normal work schedule here. That means the Nintendo Prime podcast should be popping off tonight, barring any unforeseen difficulties. I don't have the audio working on the, that set yet. We got some of the finagle with that, but I want to thank you guys so much for tuning in. You guys have been absolutely amazing. I couldn't ask for a better audience. Thank you so much for the patience to get back on camera. Hopefully everything sounds great here and I'll catch you guys in the next video.